What is up YouTube? For today's beginner hero guide, we'll be taking a look at Warden. As you go through the video, make sure to pay attention to the chapters that I have included in the timestamps, just in case that you want to skip to a certain piece of information. But now, let's begin. Warden is a hero that can be a tanky damage dealer who does the best when he has a lot of movement speed. Because of that, he's able to run down opponents and take fights that others would just normally not be able to take. First, let me give you a little overview here of his abilities. His one is a bomb that does damage, it slows people, his 2 is a shield along with movement speed bonus for himself. His 3 is a radius in which he will trap one person within that radius. And his 4, his ultimate, is one big AoE area in which he does damage and heals himself based on how much damage he does. So to go a little bit more in depth here, his 1 is alchemical flask where he throws a flask that damages, slows, and reduces the weapon damage and the stamina of whichever enemies it hits. This stamina reduction does not apply until you level it up twice, but before that it does does do the movement speed slow, the weapon damage, and the damage of course. Now at level 1, it just does 55 damage, 20% movement slow, and 30% weapon damage reduction to the enemy player that gets hit by it, and it lasts 6 seconds. When you level it up once, you will get the plus 40 damage, so now you're doing 95 damage, everything else stays the same. When you level it up again, you get the plus 1 stamina reduction whenever you hit an enemy with it, and when you level it up all the way, you get cooldown reduction and the 33% fire rate slow. Now the damage stacks based on spirit power just like his other abilities so he's very good to build a lot of spirit power on. Now you always want to be spamming alchemical flask here. This ability is extremely powerful in the laning phase because you are able to hit people with it and then they can't trade with you because you have that reduction in weapon damage to the enemy team that gets hit. So as soon as this comes off cooldown every 14 seconds you always want to be using it just as much as possible during the laning phase. His next ability is called willpower. It is his number two. At level one, it will give you 150 spirit shield health and 15% movement speed bonus. If you level it up again, you will get plus 20% movement speed bonus, so now you'll be at 35%, which is extremely good. Next level, you get a negative 19 second cooldown reduction, and as you can tell, because it has a 42 second cooldown originally, this minus 19 seconds is huge. Lastly, when you level it up all the way, you get an extra 200 spirit shield health that does scale with spirit power. For every point of spirit power, Power, you will be getting 3.9 times more shield health. So this is one of the first abilities that you want to max out. It's extremely helpful. So the way that you want to use this is by chasing people. You really want to use this thing because you will be a lot quicker than them. Defensively, if you need to run away, it's also very good to use because you get the spirit shield health and of course that extra movement speed. Now, as soon as you level it up once, because you get that extra plus 20% movement speed bonus, now you're at 35%. That means that you can basically run anyone down or escape from anyone due to the shield too. It's just a really helpful ability, this number two here. Then his number three ability is called Binding Word. It has a 20 meter radius with a 37 second cooldown and it says that it will curse an enemy hero. If they don't move away from their initial position within the escape time, they will be damaged and immobilized. As soon as it goes off when it locks, it will be doing 120 damage to the enemy player. It will keep them from moving for 1.75 seconds, but that means that they can still shoot, they just can't move. They also have 2.9 seconds to escape from this radius here if they escape from this radius then they won't be trapped the radius the range at which they have to escape is 18.5 meters here and then when you level it up you will get an extra second of immobilizing duration you will also get a negative 19 second cooldown reduction on it, which is very good. And at the last level, Warden will deal 20% more bullet damage to those heroes that he has trapped inside of this trap for the next 6 seconds. Now the way that you really want to use this thing is by making sure that they've already used a stamina or something so that they can't escape. Because as you just saw, this guy is not moving that quick, but he was able to escape because it only has an 18.5 meter range. That means that as soon as I hit him here, if he's in the circle, he will be trapped and then you can shoot him in the head that's usually what you want to do but you really want to make sure that they don't have enough stamina to do this as soon as they do that they're basically outside of the 18.5 meter range we will find out how to improve that later but this does deal a decent amount of damage even at the lower levels and it helps a lot because then you can keep them trapped and just make sure that you aim for the head once you do have them trapped lastly we have his ultimate which is called last stand it has a 12 meter radius at level one six seconds of duration and 138 
8 second cooldown, which is huge. It says that after charging for 2.2 seconds, you release pulses that damage enemies and heal you based on the damage done. While you channel last stand, you have greatly increased bullet resistance. So right now, I would have much more bullet resistance while I was actually charging it up with my hand up like this. As you can see, it just deals tick damage here. And that damage is actually healing me too. Let me just show you here. So you see, I've taken some damage now. I will use this and you'll see how it just heals me as it deals damage to, to the enemy here. Now I'm back up to full health. Now let's keep reading here. It does 100 damage per second. It scales off of spirit power. And the lifesteal amount here is 100% hero lifesteal. If you're dealing damage to a hero, you will get 100% of that health back. But only 50% of the damage that you deal to minions will be healed back to you. Every pulse happens at 0.5 seconds every single time. So every 500 milliseconds, there will be some damage being done. Now you level this up once and you get plus three more meters radius. So the difference is actually kind of big here. Let me show you. So if you're right here, standing right at the line, this is five meters away. This is 10 meters away. This is 15. So let's use it here. I'm charging it up. As you can see, it goes right past that 10 meter range here because it is 12 meters. Then if you level it up one more time here, it will reach all the way up to the 15 meters, which as you can tell, it doesn't sound like much, but practically it is how big that is now it goes all the way out there then if you level it up again you will be doing 70 damage per second more and if you level it up all the way you will have minus 56 seconds cooldown on this ability which is insane that means that you will basically have this for every single team fight at the end of the game now the way that you really want to use this is let's say that somebody's chasing you down a corner or something you just dodge in and before they're able to hit you you just last stand that way you can come back and if they're still chasing you you can just really 1v1 them or 1 v2 them as long as last stand is actually going off it's just that good of an ability because you heal so much damage back and it deals a lot of damage to them now for the build that i really like to use here first during the laning phase i usually go as my first item i go for high velocity magazine because without high velocity magazine these bullets take a long time to actually reach an enemy let me just show you here what it looks like so let's say that you're last hitting look at how slow these bullets are that means that other people are able to destroy the souls or deny your souls much easier than you can actually confirm them. Look at how slow this bullet speed is. Yet, as soon as you get high velocity magazine, that's a lot quicker. Now you're able to actually confirm souls without struggling much. It's almost as if it was hit scan. A lot of other heroes will still beat you with their projectile speed, but that makes it a lot easier to confirm. So this is pretty much an essential item in the very early game. So I end up getting high velocity magazine first. Then, depending on if I actually need healing or not in the laning phase, I will go for healing right. This is just very useful, very good to use in pretty much any matchup if you're not ridiculously up there. If you are beating the enemy hero by that much that you don't need healing right, then don't worry about healing right, but usually it will be a little bit more even. And you want to minimize the amount of time that you go back to base, so healing right is just very useful in pretty much most matchups. Then I like to go for basic magazine because it gives you weapon damage and more ammo. As you can see, we only have 17 rounds before we have have to reload and a lot of us i know that a lot of us beginning to play the game that don't know how to manage the ammo correctly yet have issues a lot of the time you're reloading while there are souls in the middle of the air so therefore more ammo equals more better because now we have 22 bullets to actually mess around with that's a lot better the next few items during the laning phase highly depend on how it's going sprint boots are for whenever you're about to leave the the lane so that you can go gank easier close quarters is extremely good if you're going to stay in the lane and you're beating the enemy already. Mystic Burst is also very good to use because then your Q just does more damage, which is always just better if you're going to be staying in the lane for a little bit longer. Mystic Reach is also really good because your ultimate goes way further using Mystic Reach now and so does your Binding Word because now you have a 22 meter escape range due to Mystic Reach. So that'll make it a lot harder for the enemy to actually get away from your jail. And lastly, Slowing Hex. You can skip this if you want and save up to get a knockdown here but i do enjoy getting slowing hex at the very start of the game because it makes it a lot harder for the enemy team to run away from your jail and then you can basically 1v1 anyone this is because of the movement slow that it applies to the enemy player which is very good to have but in the end i do like knockdown a little bit better now during the mid game here you're gonna be ganking a lot you're gonna be moving a lot so fleet foot is just amazing using this you can run down players really easily as you can see on the bottom
bottom left here, we have a movement speed of 8.0 meters per second. Now, as soon as we use fleet foot, we have 11 meters per second. That is a lot higher. And then if you use your number two here, let's say that has leveled up just a little bit, along with fleet foot, you will see how you're getting 14 meters per second. That is so fast. That is almost the speed at which you zip line. So fleet foot is just always amazing to have so that you can run players down. Along the same route, I really enjoy getting enduring speed as the upgrade to my sprint boots because of the base movement speed upgrade here. The sprint speed is always nice too whenever you're gonna go gank and it stops people from slowing you down as much because of the movement slow resist. Next, I do really like getting knocked down at this point in the game because you can use that in combination with your binding word here to really hurt someone. So let's say that you have somebody in the middle of the air. So let's say a Vindicta or maybe a Great Talon, something around those lines. You can always use your knockdown first and then before it goes off, you apply your binding word here and it keeps them within the range of your jail heal here a lot easier. Bam, and now he really can't escape. There's almost no way to escape that as long as you just wait for about a second. So basically you would be using knockdown, count half a second to a second, and then hit your binding word, and they'll almost always be within that circle there. It will not be easy for them to run away. So that's why I really like knockdown. Next, let's get a lot tankier here using Enchanter's Barrier and Combat Barrier. Both of these will give you a different shield, so Enchanter's will give you Spirit Shield and Combat will give you Bullet Shield. As a passive, whenever you have one of these shields, you gain bonus Spirit Power and cooldown reduction whenever you're shielded with your Spirit Shield and then Weapon Damage and Fire Rate while shielded using the Combat Barrier. Both of these, because you do have a pretty good shield here for Willpower especially, that means that you almost always be shielded whenever you are in a fight so these items here make it so that you can deal a lot more damage and give you a lot of survivability too there's just no way that you don't get these these are just too good on warden then i really like getting something like quicksilver reload to make it a lot quicker to farm you want to use it on alchemical flask here so that whenever you throw it you end up actually reloading. So let's say that I'm farming the jungle here. If I was just to do this, this would take me forever. But I do have those 22 bullets. I do it again. I reload immediately. And now I'm actually able to farm so much easier than if I didn't have Quicksilver on it. This makes me a lot more efficient whenever I am farming using Warden. So although a lot of people don't really recommend it, I have found that Quicksilver Reload gives you such a big leg up against your opponents when it comes to farming that it's just really good to have. Now, these are some really good mid-game items. If you don't have any flex slots, then you definitely want to start upgrading the basic magazine to titanic magazine and the close quarters to point blank. This just increases your damage by a lot here. And now you're going to be able to so easily 1v1 flares. And then if you still don't have flex slots, then you want to start getting rid of things. You will definitely want to get reactive barrier for which we will replacing that with healing right. Reactive barrier just gives you more ammo. It gives you more bullet shield health and more spirit shield health that means that because of these items you're always going to be dealing much more damage even right after you're uh, locked stunned chained immobilized or slept you will get these shields and therefore you will deal extra damage as soon as those effects run out if you still have the shields of course but it does help with these items because a lot of the meta right now is heroes that can lock you down stun you sleep you that happens all the time this will increase your survivability by a lot here so this is just always a really good item to buy on warden especially, I think. Now, let's say that you do have a couple flex slots here. Duration extender is extremely good to have. Everything that you have will get improved by this, so you will keep people locked down for longer, and then your ultimate will last longer also, and so will your willpower, which gives you the movement speed bonus and the spirit shield health. So all of this combined just means the duration extender is kind of a must on Warden. Then for damage, I really like getting slowing bullets because it does build into silencer later on, but for now, it just gives you weapon damage plus five spirit power which we know is really good on warden already and you do get that movement slow so it'll be even harder to run away from your binding ward here then in the way late game i do of course like upgrading my silencer because it does let you silence people as long as you're shooting at them whenever you do have it active and silencing people hurts them a lot then for more survivability in the late game diviner's kevlar helps so much because you get 20 percent spirit lifesteal and you get 12 percent cooldown reduction that 
that means that your ultimate now has such a tiny cooldown that it's almost nothing. You will always have it almost guaranteed by now. You also get that spirit damage boost, which is insane. And instead of 100% hero lifesteal, now you actually have 120% hero lifesteal. So once you do get Diviner's Kevlar, which you always want to get on Warden if it gets that late into the game, you will be almost unstoppable with this thing. It just does so much damage and you're healing for more than this. Towards the end of the game, I also like to get Headhunter because it just deals way more damage in the end. Of course, if you're feeling like you're really on top of the world here, you end up with Glass Cannon and you do at this point definitely get rid of stuff like High Velocity Magazine. Maybe you get rid of Mystic Burst, for example. That's one of the first ones that I would get rid of because they really don't help that much in this stage of the game. Then Soul Rebirth as a very, very late game item is almost necessary to have at any moment here at the end, which I would replace a high velocity magazine for that one. You could also do Unstoppable or Inhibitor. It just depends here. These three items, you kind of just want to choose which one of the three you really need, depending on the issues that you're encountering. If you're not lasting long enough in fights, maybe Soul Rebirth will help. That way you can come back to life during a team fight and really help out your team here. If there's a lot of CC, then Unstoppable. And if there's no one that really stops you at any moment, then just get Inhibitor. Lastly, I do want to mention Magic Carpet here, just because it's a really fun item. I mean, I got this from Deathy's build for Warden. It's just a lot of fun to use. So you could definitely do things like going up all the way in the sky here without anyone really noticing, and then dropping down with your ultimate and just completely catching them off guard. They would have no idea that you're coming using this item. But it's really just a fun item. There's not much more to this. And now I want to give you a couple of tips for playing Warden. During the laning phase, you of course don't really want to you be reloading whenever you need to deny creeps, but that is what you want to focus on. You want to focus on denying and being able to confirm. Now, because you are a little bit more tanky than most of their characters, you can actually just wait until your creeps do most of the damage to the enemy creeps, and then you can just punch them so that they don't have a chance to, the enemy doesn't have a chance to get rid of your souls to deny them. And that is really the largest objective. Make sure that you are not getting your souls denied while at the same time denying as many enemy souls souls as you possibly can. Now because of the projectile speed not being that high on Warden, especially at the beginning, you really want to focus on that, try to deny as much as possible, but get high velocity ma velocity magazine as soon as you can. You also want to be using your number one ability as much as possible. It's extremely powerful and you want to be hitting the enemy heroes with it. And that's how you're going to be aggressive. You're going to be aggressive with your one ability onto enemy heroes and that's how you're going to keep them away from being able to last hit, you're going to be using your one to punish that. Of course, the laning phase goal, the ultimate goal is to destroy the enemy guardian. So as soon as you get kills, as soon as you have the opportunity to, and you're able to push out the lane, then you want to just go for the guardian as much as possible. You want to get it before the enemy gets your guardian so that it gets rid of the item shop on the enemy side. And then your team can control more of the map, which is very important. Now, if you don't do well during the laning phase, then you can always go to other lanes and that will make it so that you can actually come back in general. Even if you lose your own lane, as long as you can help your team win, you'll be okay. Just try to make sure to survive. That is the biggest thing. Even if you lose your guardian first, just try to survive. That is kind of what can make or break the game. Just try to live as much as possible while at the same time being able to last hit and confirm your souls and deny the enemy souls as much as you can and if you do lose the lane try to gank other lanes so that you can give your team the leg up now for the mid game warden is not really an amazing farmer which is why we don't really want to focus on that too much but if you do decide to get quicksilver reload which i do highly recommend he can actually destroy the camps really easily it's a lot quicker for him to get the camps if he has quicksilver reload so that that is why i recommend it at least Although it's good to farm during the downtime when you're not fighting, it's really better to fight as Warden than it is to farm. So always be on the lookout for those who you can easily gank. Because of his prison, you have a lot of ability here to gank. You're able to lock them down for a very long time. And let's say that you did get something like Knockdown, for example, which is highly recommended. I do really like this ability. Let's say that you use it on somebody that you gank, then you do this. 
and they pretty much can't escape. This is almost a guaranteed kill for your team if you gank somebody with that. So I do think you should really try that out. If you're losing the lane, just try to go for that. You can also do the same thing with low, slowing hex, of course. The most important tip, even during the mid game, just like in the early game there, is that you always want to survive. You'll have an easy time soloing people whenever you do have knockdown or, you know, even if you got slowing hex, but you always want to make sure that you just don't die for a kill. So whenever you do gank, try not to die. So if you're just about to get the kill, don't rush for it. Don't tunnel vision into getting that kill. Just go back. If you didn't get the kill, you didn't get the kill. It's okay. Just try not to die. Lastly, during the late game, you're really a fighting champion. Your ultimate ability makes everything happen for you. You can almost just survive against 3v1 just because your ultimate is going off. It heals you for so much and does so much damage that you can really stick around, especially when you use your shield here and you do have things like combat barrier and enchanters barrier. Just don't be afraid to fight as long as you have your ultimate ability in the late game. You always want to be with your team. Farming the jungle only happens when you're not fighting, just like during the mid game. But at this stage of the game, you should always be looking to pick off lone opponents and then pushing into the enemy base with your team after getting that one pick. So that way you have like a 5v6, for example. Just always try to fight whenever you do have your ultimate backup, whether that be a team fight or maybe you're picking somebody off that is just alone in a lane somewhere. And that's really going to help you out with Warden here. Now, I really hope this helped you out as a beginner. I know that making these conscious decisions have really helped me become a better Warden player. So I really hope they help you too. Let me know in the comments down below what improvements you would like to see in this series if you have any. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. I will out.